Well, that's when you're going to read that book. That's when you're going to read Tarantino's book. Yeah. And what if he gives you a shout out at the end? You just never bother to read. Yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Well, now he's going to know because I don't <laughs> think I've ever. I don't know that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Tarantino, if you're watching this clip right now, um, I did read. I read the no. So when I was on vacation last summer, I read the first couple of chapters. They were great. Really? Yeah, okay. and I've got it right next to my bed because I keep meaning to pick it up. But I'm going to do it on the plane. The plane. I'm going to be on like 18 hours on a plane. So. Oh, did you watch the movie? Oh, Once Upon a Time. Yeah, twice. Yeah, twice. I liked it. Really? Yeah. Were you a little bit? Yeah, yeah. Biggest, the first time I saw it, with the first how much yeah. I saw it the day it opened because I didn't, you know, I knew that there was some radically different ending, but I didn't right. want anyone to tell me what it was. So when I saw it, you know, I saw it with you know completely objective, open eyes. And when they got, I mean, the, the Spawn Ranch scene was pretty accurate, you know, where really? Brad Pitt goes and beats up Clem Grogan and you know, visits George Spawn. That was, looked very, really? yeah. Okay. And then I kind of thought, all right, well, these murders are going to happen as they happen, in, in, at least in the historical version. And then when all of a sudden it's, you know, the killer's going to the house next door to share, I'm like, what the right. hell? And then the violence, you know, I know what I'm getting into when I see a Tarantino movie, sure. but when they have, you know, uh, Leo and Brad Pitt, massacring the Manson family members, it was disturbing to me because I felt it was disrespectful to the real victims who really had gone sure. through this. And especially the laughing and hooting and hollering in the theater during it, you know, I thought this just doesn't feel right. And I wasn't going to walk out, but I was pissed, honestly. And then... I still have Tarantino's number, I'll give him a call right <laughs> fucking now. I play. tell him, yeah. <laughs> but then, when he does his ending, where DiCaprio's character walks up and sees the victims, and you hear the little tinkling of the music, and the camera pulls out, and you see Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the title. I'm like, oh, I get it. It's, I mean, it's a fairy tale. This could have been like that. And it really right. moved me to such a degree that I, like, sat in the car for, like, an hour in the parking lot trying to figure out if I liked it or didn't like it. <laughs> right. Yeah. And, I had the same reaction. I wasn't, yeah, yeah. So it worked. that was before I read your book. Oh really? Wow. Yeah. So I, I just felt like this is a strange movie. Cause I feel like there's so much fuckery with this case that you don't have to manifest or make up a different ending. But I guess if that's what he's going for, that makes a lot more sense. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And you know, like if he had known, you know, what he knows now from my book about how much of the official story wasn't true, maybe lie, he, maybe yeah. he would have gone down that road. But I think the road he went down was he wanted to make it more of like a, a moral about old Hollywood meeting new Hollywood right. and all of these kind of cultures colliding. And uh, I didn't know it at the time because I had never seen um, Inglorious Bastards. So I didn't know oh, he classic. did that kind of, uh, my friend, yeah, of course. pardon me. Yeah, he does that. He does that with his movie. He just has a completely historically different. Well, one of my whatever. friend's kids, who's a movie buff, told me like a few months before the Tarantino movie came out, when already it was being reported, there was a surprise ending. He goes, I bet he does the same thing he did in Inglorious Bastards. And I said, what do you do in that movie? And he said, oh, in the end, the Nazis all get killed. And uh, I can't remember. Yeah, Hitler gets killed in a, it's and a I theater. Said, all the Nazis get killed in the theater. Yeah. I said, he did that in that movie? That's weird. <laughs> and, and my friend's kid, Bo, goes, yeah, yeah. And I bet he does it in this. I go, well, he can't do it because if he's done it once, it's a gimmick. It'll look like he's run out of ideas. And then, sure enough, my friend Bo was right. He did it the second time. He did it again. Uh, I still haven't seen Inglorious Bastards. I guess I need to see that, too. I guess it's fascinating because this is such a cult story. And if he did a, a conspiracy-type ending, let's say, or, well, not conspiracy, but let's say a, an alternative to the narrative, yeah. it wouldn't really set him too far apart from all the crazy other people out there. Yeah. So, right? So he did something completely his own thing, which made it very, very unique. Yeah, yeah. And I think the movie's like, three hours and I, I supposedly he has a longer cut that's four hours or something and i'd see it he's going to release it oh, at absolutely. some point yeah i mean and the the, the visual of the, film, the production design the music even the acting everything is so cool that's why he's one of the best in the business yeah uh, but when you talk to him you, he didn't talk to you specifically about his movie and never came, how the subject never came up 
Really? Oh, well, no, he told. I would imagine that would be something that you would have to at least mention or bring up. Well, it, it, you know, it, he was asking me very specific questions, and he said, you know, I'm writing about Ruth Ann Morehouse in my book, and she's not in my movie. I mean, he would allude to the movie, but we never, right. you know, I did uh, He wanted very specific information from me, and then he got really kind of curious about how I. You know, he was asking me questions like you, like, why did, how come you never gave up? I mean, didn't you feel like, you know, that kind of thing? He became more right. interested in what was going on in my head when I. That's what I've always said. I think you're the most interesting character in your book, with all due respect to every one of these murderers slash oh, wow. slash government. I guess that's a compliment. Thank you. I'm not sure. I think you, I know, I do think you are, because without you, the story is not as, I don't get as attached to the journey, if that makes sense. Yeah. Because I, I, I know you talked about this before with, um, with Dan. Mm hmm. And he was saying we should include more of you in the story. And that makes such like that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Because you're talking about a 50 year old story. I want to know someone in the moment that's trying to get to that. Yeah. You know, yeah. Right? We talk about that as, you know, originally I didn't want to be in it at all. And then I realized. Yeah, that would have been a horrendous mistake. Yeah, I think. I mean, the only way to tell it, because, you know, there's so many open ends and it's hard to present that kind of information without having the character living it at the same time yes. he's finding it. So it works, I think. Yeah, I hope. 